So it is day 25 of me living full time in a tiling window manager or tiling window managers plural and using only terminal based applications where possible. How am I doing? That's the topic for the day. Okay, so I set out to live in tiling window managers and only using terminal based applications where possible for 30 days. That was my 30 day challenge for the month. And initially I made four or five uh, videos that first week I did that. And then you guys haven't heard much from me as far as videos on how I'm doing as far as tiling window managers and using all these terminal based applications because I've had some computer issues. Uh, been a, a, there's been a lot of downtime as far as my main production machine and the when I could get it functioning correctly we had the big Ubuntu releases that took up pretty much an entire week and then the Fedora release right after that. So for the last couple of weeks, I've been kind of quiet as far as this tiling window manager and terminal based application 30 day challenge. But I'm going to hit it pretty hard, you know, here day 25 to day 30. I'm going to keep you guys up to date for sure in the next few days. I know a lot of you guys have been messaging me on YouTube. Some of you have sent me emails as well. For those of you that want to contact me by email, I really don't mind. I have an email set up for this channel, Derek, D-E-R-E-K, Derek, at distrotube.com. Feel free to email me uh, questions, comments, whatever. I don't mind. I check that email usually at least once a day, and I try to respond to everybody that emails me. So, the tiling window manager, uh, I installed two tiling window managers. Actually, three are installed on the, my machine right now. I installed the Manjaro i3 edition. It's the distro I'm running, but I haven't touched i3 at all because I'm saving that for when I need to review i3 as part of the obscure window manager project, that particular series I'm doing on the channel. I don't know anything about i3, and I'm trying to keep it that way until I look at i3. But I did install Qtile, which is a tiling window manager written in Python, and that is the tiling window manager I've lived for the most part in in the last 25 days. I also installed Xmonad on this computer and I occasionally log into Xmonad and live in it but probably 80% of the time I've spent in Qtile occasionally I log into the Xmonad session. Uh, what apps have I been playing around with? Well one that I've grown to love and I've liked this program for some time but of course, in the last 25 days, I've spent a lot of time in the Lynx web browser. Lynx is a terminal based, text based web browser. Uh, by default, I have it opening distrowatch.com. That's what I have the home page set to. But say I want to go somewhere else, I type G on the keyboard for go. And then type a web address. Mm, how about OMG Ubuntu? OMG Ubuntu.co.uk. Hit enter, and it's going to take me to the OMG Ubuntu website. And here we are on OMG Ubuntu. I page down a couple times to get to the articles, and I click on a link that I want to view. How about what does Ubuntu collect about your PC? Yeah, I want to read that article. Hit enter. And we wait a few seconds, and it opens that page, and here's the article. And I could read this if this was what I was wanting to do. Also, you guys notice um, Lynx does not ask me about cookies. When you first install Lynx, it always asks you to confirm, do you want to accept cookies for the web pages you're going to? Almost every website, certainly every big website on the internet uses cookies. You are going to get so annoyed being asked that question every time you go to a new page. What you need to do is do what I did. Go into the Lynx config file and disable that uh, that cookie question just automatically accept all cookies otherwise uh, you are going to, going to be really frustrated <laughs> so but the links web browser once you get that uh, annoying cookie question uh, disabled is a, is a fantastic text-based web browser and you can get a lot done in something like links because news blog posts wikis those sorts of things are all text anyway yeah, they might have some images on the page. You know, most blog posts, most news articles have some images, but they're not necessary. They're not necessary to the article, to that news article, to that blog post. It's really superfluous. Uh, it's unnecessary cruft. And it's nice to get that stuff out of the way, actually, because 
it's distracting. A lot of that multimedia stuff is distracting from the word, the actual text that you're really interested in. Plus, using something like links, uh, there's no ads because ads, of course, are multimedia. They're images and video. No ads, uh, so you don't have to worry about an ad blocker with links. Links Web Browser is a program I, I really love and I will continue to use even after this 30-day challenge. Let's see what else I have hotkeyed here. Googler. Googler is a really nice terminal-based application for searching Google. Uh, I have it opening by default searching for DistroTube. Why? Because most of these pages are pages I go to on a daily basis like, you know, my YouTube page, my Facebook page, my Twitter page, my Reddit page. Although I won't be going to my Facebook page any longer because I deleted that account. Check my video yesterday. I'm deleting Facebook from my life. My GitHub page is also here, uh, my Patreon page. Anyway, but anyway, say I want to do something else in Googler. I want to search for, I don't know, how about Fedora? Let's search for a Linux distro. And we get the search results for Fedora. Say I want to view the very first search re search result, which is getfedora.org. Just type one, hit enter. This should open this in our terminal base web browser. I I'm assuming this is opening in links. Yeah, looks like links. Anyway, and then we could, you know, read this page in links. That's Googler. Uh, pretty nice program actually. Of course you're probably wondering why wouldn't you just go to google.com and link search for whatever. You could but it's nice having a program specifically designed to view Google because it gets rid of a lot of the unnecessary stuff on the Google search results page. It only shows you the Google search results N nothing else no links to any kind of like image files or anything like that that links sometimes will show. Uh, this program here, of course, is our RSS newsfeed reader. This is Newsboat, a really nice RSS reader. Pretty standard, you know, it shows you the RSS newsfeed descriptions. Uh, if you want to investigate things further, you can. Uh, you just click on a link, it'll open to that the full web page, of course, in the links web browser, is what I have it set to. So a lot of these terminal-based applications, if they have web links, you can set them to instead of opening in Firefox, you can set them to open in Firefox or Chrome or whatever you use. But it also, it makes sense to have them open in a terminal-based uh, web browser since you're already in the terminal using those programs. So, All right, some of the other terminal-based applications I've been using. I've been using uh, the terminal-based email client, uh, NeoMutt. Uh, I'm not going to open it now because I've got a lot of emails in it and I'm, I'm not sure some of them may be uh, of a personal or private nature uh, I mean nothing crazy but you know I haven't asked all these people permission to show you these emails so I'm not gonna open up the email client but NeoMutt it's a really nice email client Let's see what else I have I have uh, of course this uh, twitch client here basically I find a, a stream in twitch and once I find it, I hit enter, and it's going to launch it. Now it's going to launch it in VLC. Let me pause that. Let me go ahead and kill it. I don't want to cause any problems as far as having this video taken down. But that particular particular Twitch client is... Uh, what is the name of that client? Let me open up my config file. I forget the name of the program, actually. It's a really nice uh, program. That Twitch client is called Twitch Curses. Twitch Curses. Okay. And that was uh, my Qtile config file there in Vim. Vim has been my text editor for the most part in the last 25 days. Uh, let's see, what else we have? I've installed so many terminal applications, I'm not even sure. I have about 30 or so hotkeyed here. Hacksor. Hacksor, of course, is for viewing Hacker News, that particular website, Hacker News. I could do HN View 25. And this will show me, well, I didn't have. Let's start with this HN Top 25. And it will show me the top 25 stories on Hacker News right now, the last 25. Now, HN View 25 will view number 25 in the list. And it should open it up in 
the Lynx web browser. In this case, there's something wrong with this one because it's trying to open a PDF. Mm, yeah, that's not going to work. Let's uh, HN view 23. Hopefully this one will not be a PDF file. Yeah, this is a normal web page. Yep. Yeah. And it, open, it opens up in the Lynx web browser. Let's see what else we have hotkeyed here. Of course, this is my Twitter page. This is a Twitter client called Rainbow Stream. If I type home here, it will go to the uh, Twitter homepage for, for my account. We'll exit out of that. Let's see what else we have. Uh, this is TIG, which is a Git client. This is for my uh, GitHub repos. Get out of that. Some other stuff I have. Of course, the Ranger file manager. Fantastic uh, terminal-based file manager. Really cool stuff here. Of course, HTOP. Everybody loves HTOP. I didn't have anything hotkeyed to that. Of course, RC, the IRC chat client, RC. Really nice program. It may take a second for this to load here. How about we join a channel? How about we join the Gen 2 channel on Freenode? There are 1,100 people in the Gen 2 channel. Go ahead, Gen 2. All right. What else can we open here? This is our torrent, our BitTorrent client, terminal-based BitTorrent client. I closed it out, though. Don't have anything torrenting. This is CalCurse. This is kind of a uh, appointment uh, to-do list, calendar all-in-one kind of app. Pretty neat little program, actually. I'm going to kill Ursi and kill CalCurse. See what else we have. Oh, that's uh, HTOP again. Uh, some other system monitoring tools. We have Glances installed. We have Inmon. Inmon is pretty cool. Let's see. Uh, this is HTTPing. It's actually a really nice program, but uh, I don't have it configured to actually ping anything right now. This is S2E. This is uh, basically uh, a stress. It stresses your system. Basically, it tests tests your uh, your system, your hardware. And finally, we have uh, what is this? This is the YouTube viewer. What is uh, the name of this particular program? I can't remember the name of some of these terminal-based applications. Let me go through my Qtile config again. YouTube viewer. Okay. Anyway, pretty simple program. You search. How about I search for DistroTube? And there you go. It re returns the top 20 results for the search term DistroTube. I type 1, hit enter. It opens that video. The reason the VLC. I better not play it, even though it's my video. Still, YouTube, their algorithms could be triggered, and, you know, they may send me a warning about it. All right. And that was about it. Let's see what else I had. Of course, I had Whopper, W-O-P-R. This is for creating uh, presentation type programs using XML, markup language. And it displays in a terminal. So it's kind of like your LibreOffice uh, Impress or your uh, Microsoft presentation stuff. It's been a terminal using XML. Pretty neat. I haven't played with it much. Played around with it a little bit, but it looks like it's not the easiest program in the world. I mean, to create something like this, you kind of have to know XML. You kind of have to be a master with a markup language. And uh, that's, you know, I don't know, 15 or 20 or so programs that I've kind of played around with a lot here in the last 25 days living in tiling window managers. Uh, before I go, I'm going to log out and log back into the xmonad session so you guys get to see xmonad a little bit okay so i logged out of the qtile session and i logged back into the xmonad session now the xmonad session and the qtile session look very similar i purposely tried to make them the same same workspace names uh say same key bindings tried to make them look and function as much as possible the same way and the good thing about both Qtile and Xmonad is the way they handle workspaces and multi-monitors, they handle it exactly the same way. So pretty much everything else as far as the tiling and stuff, yeah, I can configure X Xmonad and Qtile kind of to be the same. Uh, 
So X Monad is, is really, really nice. Seems a little snappier, a little faster than Qtile. And Qtile is pretty quick. But Qtile, of course, is written in Python. X Monad is written in Haskell. Also, X Monad, uh, it's very stable. It's been around forever and it has a ton of users, a ton of people working on the project. So big plus to X Monad. Before I go, I want to give a special thanks to my patrons, all my Patreon supporters. AK Ron, Mr. Neely Pops, John, Brian, Carl, Greg, Carlos, Rob, Matt, Darkwin, Mark, Christian, Jake, Benjamin, Stephen, Marcus, Interceptor, Bob, Lior, Omar, and Silvio. You guys are awesome. You guys help make this show possible. Peace, guys. Mm -hmm.